Hey everybody, it's Michael again with Late Night Astronomy, and I'm out on a beautiful night to image my favorite planet, Jupiter. Its cloud belts, great red spot, and Galilean moons make it a unique target every single night of imaging. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the basic steps that you need to take to capture footage of Jupiter and process it using free software so that you can create incredible images of this planet to share with your friends and family. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel. And most importantly, let me know about your questions and experiences imaging Jupiter in the comments section below. Let's get started by connecting our equipment to our telescope. For tonight, I'm going to be connecting my DSLR directly to the telescope using a T-ring and extendable camera adapter. At the end of the extendable adapter, I'm going to connect a 3x Barlow lens. You may want to consider a 2x Barlow lens depending upon your telescope and imaging equipment. This Barlow lens will provide proper focus for my telescope and image sensor along with tripling my focal length to bring out more detail in Jupiter particularly during evenings when sky conditions are clear and steady. If you're using a smartphone, simply connect your smartphone to a camera adapter and place the lens of your camera over a medium to high power eyepiece to capture your footage of Jupiter. Set your DSLR to manual and open up the main menu. Make sure that your camera is filming at the highest frame rate available which for this model is 60 frames per second. I've also got my shutter speed set to 60, and I've found that good ISOs for Jupiter tend to range from 800 to 3200 for this specific camera. It just depends on the sky conditions that evening. Be sure not to forget to change the picture style to neutral and the white balance to daylight. Now that our settings are locked in, let's switch over to live view to find the planet. Once you have found Jupiter with your telescope, you will need to use the digital zoom feature at 5 times or 10 times magnification, and as the object moves through the field of view, make fine-tuned adjustments to your telescope's focus until you are pleased with the sharpness of it. Now reset your telescope to allow Jupiter to move through the entire field, and press record right as you start to see it appear. Be sure not to touch anything while it is recording. I typically like to get at least 10 passes at a planet, trying out different ISO settings along the way. Just be sure to always double check your focus. Once it passes out of the field of view, stop the recording and review your footage. After a great night out imaging and viewing Jupiter, we're back inside for the next step of the process. This is going to involve four free pieces of software that I'll be sure to leave a link to in the description below. Through this software, we're going to process, stack, and enhance this footage of Jupiter to bring out some incredible details. Let's get started. Well, the first thing we're going to want to do is begin by reviewing the footage that we actually took of Jupiter. So I've got my folder up here already organized into the three best ISOs that I got for imaging. ISO 800, 1600, and 3200. For tonight, it was a little bit overcast and the ISO 800, as you can see, came out just a little bit too dark. It's almost actually impossible to see right here. If we go over to ISO 1600, we have a much more recognizable view here of Jupiter. We can actually make out that we got the red spot tonight. So that's pretty cool getting the great red spot. I did not know that was going to be visible this evening. But that's still a little bit too dim for the conditions that we had tonight. So most nights I probably would go with 800 or 1600, but I think the ISO 3200 footage is really going to be the sweet spot this evening. Yeah, that's an excellent view of Jupiter that we have, and it looks to be pretty clear and steady skies for this roughly 45 second clip that I got. So we're going to go with this one. So we've got the ISO 3200 footage, and the first thing that we're going to have to do is run it through a program called PIP. 
planetary imaging pre-processing. This is going to make sure that the footage is able to be used for every step to come. So I'm going to go up here to File, click Add File, and it's already here in the folder where I've got the ISO 3200 footage of Jupiter. Now you're going to want to make sure that you click on Planetary because that's what it is. We're shooting the planet Jupiter. And there's not much else that I'm going to change in terms of what is already here. Um, the footage that I have tonight is pretty straightforward. It's Jupiter just moving across the field of view. So I'm not going to have to do too much to it. Uh, just to be sure though, make sure that you've got your output set to AVI and that the AVI file option is raw uncompressed. Uh, things different than that I've had trouble with in the past. So from that, let's click on Start Processing. So PIP has worked its magic, and just to make sure, let's go look and see what it actually did. So we go back to our Jupyter folder. We now have a PIP folder here, and we can see that our image of Jupyter that used to have it moving across the field of view has now been centered. So we have Jupyter that is framed, that is in the right format to be used for all of the steps left to go. So that's exactly what we want to see. So I'm going to close out PIP and go to our next free software, which is Auto Stackert 3. I'm going to begin by opening up the file that we just looked at here. Go to the PIP folder and then bring that into the software. You can see it framed here very nicely. We're going to go over and we're going to click Analyze. Now this is going to go through and basically judge the quality of each of the roughly 3,000 frames that were captured earlier in our video. And we've got some pretty good data here. So if you go over here, you'll see to the far left that this is going to be the highest quality frames. And then over here to the right will be the lowest quality frames. So the question then becomes, how many frames do you want to have in it? Do you want it to be something like 25% uh, right here? 50, 75, it's going to be a judgment call depending on your footage. Um, if you see a dramatic spike down at any point of the curve, that's where you're going to want to stop it. So I definitely wouldn't want to go over here and do 100%. But this is pretty good footage, so I think I'm going to do something like 90% of the frames being kept for this just to see how it turns out. So once you've determined that, you're going to go over here to this window and you're going to want to place the alignment points so that it knows exactly what it's looking at. So let's do place AP grid. All right, that's a pretty good starting point. You can adjust the brightness here to maybe get more of them or fewer of them. It depends on how bright your object is, but that looks pretty good. Um, we could go up here and make the alignment points smaller, but you really don't want to have too many alignment points. Uh, I found that most of my best footage ends up being somewhere between 20 and 30 alignment points because you really want them taking up a good amount of the surface of the planet and overlapping each other so that they know what they're doing when they're stacking it. So I'm pretty happy with this. We've got 26 alignment points. They're at size 48. The brightness is at 10. I think this is going to go pretty well. So let's stack this footage of Jupiter. All right, so Auto Stacker 3 has run its course. Let's go over here and check on the picture. So we started out with this video of it moving across. We had that stationary with PIP. And now we have this new folder here, Auto Stackert 90. So this should be 90% of the best frames stacked into this image. That is already looking like a better image of Jupiter. That's a pretty good start at this point. But I think we can make it even better than that. So let's go into now Registax 6. And this is when really the, the magic happens in terms of bringing out detail of it. So we're going to go to the file that we were just at. 
where we have the 90% of frames that are stacked. And we have this much brighter image now of Jupiter. And there are a few things that we want to do at this point. The first is we want to make sure that our colors are aligned. So we're going to go over here to RGB Align. Let's click Estimate. Okay, so that's shown us that there was a little bit of a difference that it did in terms of the color, so that's good. So that's a little more aligned of an image. Next thing I like to do is RGB balance, and this is going to be a pretty dramatic difference probably. Let's click Auto Balance. That is a very big improvement, much more natural colors. Let's go up here to Histogram. So the histogram can be confusing. Um, the first thing I normally like to start to do for an image like this is cut it off at the end right here, maybe around 20 or so. So let's click stretch for that. Okay, so that brings out a lot more of the histogram curve now. Um, you may want to leave it where it is. You may want to move it in a little bit. Uh, I like typically having some room to work with with the histogram at the end. So I'm actually not going to do anything else other than that first adjustment. But I am going to leave this loaded up in the corner because it can tell us some good data as we're going into different parts of this. So let's go over here to wavelets. Wavelets are incredibly powerful and incredibly confusing as to how they work. Um, you'll find a lot of different tutorials on a lot of different websites that will show you techniques I found that every single time I'm using wavelets, I use them a little bit differently depending on the planet, depending on the quality of the image. Um, so this is something that you're going to really want to experiment with to get out different versions of your planet. But I'll walk you through a basic workload of what I do. So I start by taking layer one and I'll bring it over here to maybe about 75%. And we already start to see some pretty good detail coming out of the planet. I'm going to push the sharpness up just a little bit, maybe to 1.2 or 0 0.120, excuse me. As I'm doing that, we're starting to get a little bit of noise. So I'm going to go over here and click the denoise, maybe up to 0 0.20. Second slider, I'm going to bring layer 2 over to maybe 50%. And again, I'm going to go and sharpen this a few times, but also get rid of some of the noise by denoising it as well. Layer 3, we'll do that around 50% as well. Maybe bring that up a little bit. I'm pretty pleased with that. You could spend all day going through doing the sliders in different ways, but just for the tutorial right here, I'm actually really pleased with how that turned out just from those steps. And you can see as I unclick here what we're talking about in terms of the difference. This is the original stacked image, and then we add layer 1, layer 2, layer 3. I'm pretty pleased with that. So let's go ahead and save this image. All right, we'll save this as Registax Jupiter. All right, and we'll X out of this. So now we're going to go to the final step, and that's going to be with GIMP. Now some of the color corrections I'm doing here you can do in Registax, but I found that actually using this program gives me, uh, gives me results that I think are a little more pleasing and a little more accurate. So we'll go in here to our Registax Jupyter file that we just finished with, and we'll pull that up. Now there are two main things that I do here in GIMP and they mainly involve contrast and saturation. So I'm going to go down here to brightness and contrast and just maybe push that up a little bit. Just to maybe bring out some details. That might be a little too much. Let's bring that back a little bit. Yeah, I like that. That looks good. And let's go up here to saturation just to bring out some of the colors that are already there. We've got the cloud belt showing up, how wavy and different they are, the great red spot. Yeah, that's good. It's always a balance between finding something that looks natural and not overly processed. That's going to be the biggest trick for all of these steps, is making it look natural and not overly processed. 
Let's click OK. I'm pretty pleased with that image. Let's go over here and we will export this as a TIFF file or JPEG file, whichever you prefer. We'll do a TIFF file of Jupyter final image. From our original video of Jupiter to this final image with the cloud belts in the great red spot. I hope you all have enjoyed this tutorial and it's been helpful for you. Jupiter is by far my favorite planet to observe and image and the incredible unique features of the surface of this planet that we see in this image hopefully tell you exactly why that is. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.